Steve James Viola, President and CEO of the Helicopter Association International. Welcome to this month's edition of Viola's Flight Report, where we review what HAI is doing for you. This month, we're going to focus on an issue that has been building for quite a while, the lack of qualified, skilled pilots in aviation mechanics and engineers. Operators and maintenance providers can recall a time in the not-so-distant past when they had stacks of resumes for every position. Their biggest problem was sorting through the large volume of applications. Today, for many reasons, the job market has turned. In fact, I hear that the personnel shortage is affecting operational readiness. So I want to bring you up to date on what HAI is doing to help our industry address this problem. As your association, HAI can bring together various industry groups and help them see the issue through a wider lens. That is important because this shortage extends across aerospace. HAI members are competing for aviation talent with industries that feature much larger organizations with deep pockets and well-developed recruiting campaigns. We, in the vertical aviation community, must draw on our collective abilities and strength to find solutions that address our industry's challenges. Earlier this year, the HAI Board of Directors authorized the creation of a workforce development working group to study why our industry is not attracting and keeping the right people. The leaders of this working group are probably familiar to many of you. Our liaison to the HAI Board of Directors is Mark Schlafly, owner of Dakota Rotors. The liaison to the HAI staff is Greg Brown, our Director of Education and Training Services, and the group is chaired by James Simmons, the Senior Manager of Aviation Quality for Ulista. Joining them on the working group are 18 HAI members who have volunteered their time to work on this vital industry issue. Despite being fairly new, the Workforce Development Working Group has already been quite busy. One of their first orders of business was to separate into breakout groups for pilots, maintenance, and operations. This allows them to evaluate and recommend solutions specifically for each of those areas. To better understand how aviation education fits into the picture, working group members have started to visit Part 141 and Part 61 flight schools and Part 147 aviation maintenance schools. They want to understand the obstacles around attracting new students to aviation and then channeling those students into the vertical flight industry. The Workforce Development Working Group is also promoting rotor pathway programs, such as the one that HAI helped to start in Utah several years ago. This successful award-winning program brings together state government, educational institutions, and rotor craft operators to collaborate on, one, exposing young people to vertical aviation and its opportunities and rewards, two, providing high school students with pilot and maintenance training, three, connecting those students with post-secondary education to become licensed pilots or maintenance technicians, and four, partnering with industry operators who provide mentoring, internships, and job pathways for program participants. The best thing about this program, it can be duplicated. In fact, North Dakota joined Utah by opening its own rotor pathway program earlier this year. If you think this program can work in your area, then please email me at president at rotor.org. My team would love to help you get started in building a rotor pathway program. HAI continues to support workforce development through some of our more traditional initiatives. At HAI Heli Expo, we for years have held a HAI industry career fair, which connects member companies with qualified candidates. Not surprisingly, the career fair in Atlanta this year was a great success for both employers and job seekers. There has never been a better time to enter the vertical aviation industry. Another popular event at HAI Heli Expo is our in-person Mill to Civ workshop. This program is led by veterans who have successfully made that career change, such as Stacy Sheard, a corporate helicopter captain, as well as a member of the HAI Board of Directors and a recent chair of the association. Stacy and the other Mill to Civ volunteers are enthusiastic about sharing their job search and networking knowledge, experience, and tips with veterans or current active duty military who are thinking about making the switch. If that describes you or someone you know, I encourage you to reach out. You can find them in a LinkedIn group called 
Meltasev helicopter. As an Army veteran who has also made the transition to the civilian side, I want to recognize everyone who is part of our industry's effort to welcome our military colleagues. Whether you are part of an organization such as the Meltasev helicopter group, or you simply took the time to mentor a former service member, your efforts tell us that our service is appreciated in a meaningful way. Thank you. Well, that wraps up this month's edition of VFR. Please email me with your comments or suggestions on how HAI can provide you with better service. Until next time, fly safe, stay safe, and keep those rotors turning. <laughs>